and good afternoon welcome to Floyd models live here i am with you three o'clock on may the 26th 2020 here we go again uh q a day today people so if you've got any questions at all please post them up usual thing uh stick them in uh go all over the place for this one uh we're in here today okay so it's just down in here in the tuesday live show pop them down in here it just makes things a lot easier as you can see with some of the questions we've got before to be able to read out okay so if you can do them down in there and it makes a lot easier for me all small talk and stuff like that then you can keep into the chat rooms and everything like that let me just make sure we're all running okay oh that's not a good sign uh oh no it's apparently we're okay it's all right get one of those messages again for the sound i think what it is because i mute it beforehand it screws up the system a little bit but anyway good afternoon we hope we're all doing very well as you can see i am up to my neck literally in it uh we have started on the lump um so that should be a, a lot of fun i have to say a lot of the initial thoughts with this kit about it being really horrible once you get the cleanup done it becomes that quite a, a nice thing to work with the plastic is almost plastic it's very reminiscent of resin so from a sanding point of view it actually sounds easier than traditional hard styrene so you know styrene like on this thing's quite brittle uh, it's quite tough um, you generate a little bit of heat when you sand it this stuff is actually very very forgiving so although it's obviously a low pressure injection molding system on these ones the actual way it works uh, isn't too bad at all so i should think or i'm hoping for re-riveting and scribing and all stuff like that should be very very straightforward it's not like it's a really hard plastic you got to deal with um, i am using a lot of super glues and things with this one though for a lot of the cleanup purely from a speed point of view so you know going around it and taking care of some of the little blend Blemishes, problems, gaps, holes, uh, which you are finding in this kit. I am just hitting the super glue, a little bit of kicker, and then we just sand it, and away we go. But if I just show you on here, you can see we've started to work a little bit on the wings. I've actually closed up uh, the doors because obviously this thing will be in flight. So as you can see, we've actually this is absolutely perfect, very very smooth. So I've used a bit of super glue. So we've just gone in there, super glued it up, gone through, used it for the gaps as well and um, no problem at all so actually i think coming on and rescribing and i say i'm going to re-rivet the entire thing as well we really shouldn't have a problem um, and generally some of the little cracks and the various things we've managed to sand them out i know the camera's not very good at this uh, particular angle but uh, we've actually gone with those no problem at all it is a little bit of a thing though some things i've noticed that there's no actual panel detail or anything on the underside it is only on the top so I'm going to go around and hopefully redo some of these details, some of the access panels, things like that on the bottom as well. Not that you're going to see it, but I know it's there. Um, so that's one of the little things we've had. It's that usual thing. You can see it down in here. We've got various issues uh, where it's in the ballpark. So that's literally where you glue it. And then what we'll do is we'll come in here, fill uh super glue you know whichever way it needs it and then we'll reshape afterwards so again it's one of those ones where you could mess around with it and try and get for a perfect finish so forth and so on but actually you're better off getting it in the ballpark and then having to go around you probably see on this end it's not nice it's not correct this one's even worse so it's actually a short shot on this end and it needs a lot of sanding and filling and taking care of. So it's easier just to bung them together. Then we'll get the filler in there. And then we said with this particular one, we'll be coming back and forth uh, all the time with it. Uh, to actually hopefully beat it into shape but I have to say so far it has been not too bad at all it's 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 going together okay um, obviously there's a lot of preparation work going into this one of various things we're going to do with it so um, the front end we know is the incorrect shape so we're going to take care of that we know it's got the wrong doors on it so we need to take care of that uh, and various things on the tail which we need to sort out as well but overall I think we're all okay I am going to cheat in a lot of instances as you know so i am going to fill all the windows we're not worried about those because the clear parts are horrible and again this is one of those things when we did the airliner for instance the 787 that particular one i elected to keep the windows and have them open even though we had decals for it this i think it's it's not going to work that well the clear parts are not clear typical mac 2 so i'm thinking of really we're going to just have black blacked out windows on this thing it'll be good enough for it i think or if we wanted to you could just pva glue these in there but i don't think even the windows don't look to be the right shape so when you look at them we just go back to that tight camera again you can probably see how they vary in size and shape 
uh, right the way through so again and they're not even level let's face it they're a little bit stepped up and down as you can probably see so I think it's probably not worth messing around with trying to sort of fix them so it's going to be a case of we'll fill it and then we're obviously we'll come in and we'll obviously either mask up or we'll dackle the entire thing okay so that'll be all right but generally we're okay you can see this front end this is that shape issue we've got with the nose um, and I'm just working out the best place to cut it off uh, because the doors as you can see are not symmetrical to each other so when you have it on back to back as you can see here we've got one door here but the other doors on the other side so we need to originally I was going to cut it just behind the cockpit but I can't because there's a door in the way uh, and obviously we could redo a door but I think it's easier just to take the line just behind it and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down by around about three degrees um, which you know is about half a mil uh, difference out of it to reshape the entire front end to give it a little bit more nicer look to it but generally as I say it's just yeah yeah you look at it sometimes and you think okay it's not too bad and then you look at it in other lights and you think yeah it is it needs to be sorted out but a lot of it is the surface detail uh, for this particular kit because again we're not going to be messing around with internals um, we're not messing around with undercarriage and gear because that is just awful um, the wheels yeah they are literally just like buttons uh, that make the wheels um, the undercarriage if kudos to the guys who do do it and originally I was thinking about wouldn't it be nice if this thing had drop flaps and slats and yeah that is never going to work so I'll be here literally to Christmas so the idea is is really just to push on with this one getting into it as much as I can at the moment starting to do some various things so we've done a little bit of a test fit down here on one of the engines really this is just a test to see how one goes and then we'll run it from there but again it's got shape issues and various things some of it I think we can fix uh, which will be a nice touch to it other things is going to be in the detail work uh, of going around and cleaning up the parts reshaping a little bit and then by rescribing re-riveting putting in access panels the little tiny details into it hopefully it'll draw the eye around of away from other things shall we say uh, and other problems but again i think it's one of those ones where once it's together and we get rid of the nasty stage which we're pretty much out of now um it should come together quite quickly and go through but again big things cutting the front off that's going to be where the fun's going to start uh and going through but i'll show you all about that when we get to it but um yeah i'm i'm actually quite happy of how it's going it's not one of those kits where you're sort of now thinking jesus I wish i hadn't started because uh, actually i don't think it's that bad uh, right okay calling it modeling is be too kind honestly to be honest I it's one of those it looks worse than it is uh, having built some truly crap kits over the year I know what a crap kit looks like this is just organic that's how I would describe it I wouldn't say it's bad um, it's just it's one of those things it's it shows its limitations obviously the research and the things done with it it has got some inaccuracies obviously with the nose with the tail depending which version you're doing I spoke about it at length this morning when I was recording for part one of this uh, and we were talking about the bits that are right and wrong with it and where you need to make the changes and again though it depends really if you are a rivet counter or you know the VC10 really well if you don't know the VC10 it looks like a VC10 there's no problem with it at all and you wouldn't have to mess around with the nose you wouldn't have to mess around with the wings and all the stuff like that but again that's why you know the version that I'm doing it is not the one that's on the box we're going to do a little bit of a hybrid of one that actually is this so it has got the correct wings with the correct fuselage and the various things like that so that's how we were doing it so what we can then do is adjust just what we need to so we can say right well we're trying to sort the nose out a little bit it's not going to be perfect but hopefully a lot be more of a nicer shape which is the main thing to it okay we can sort out the cargo door things like that that's pretty straightforward that's not going to be a biggie to actually do that one and again the things down the rear end we can sort out with that as well again it's not like it's going to be mass surgery uh, to try and do it so by the end of it we end up with something is right for the version we're doing um, not right for being the k2 and all the rest of it but for our version it should be absolutely fine and it'll work okay and then from the layman looking at it hopefully from a couple of feet away it'll look spot on but if you are a kc10 you know person a, a real love for it turn a blind eye to this bill because i'm going to butcher it um so i know it's not going to be right but it'd be the best i can do in the time i've got and the sort of the kit that we're working with here but i do know obviously this kit's got quite a following on the internet and a lot of people have pointed out completely what's wrong with it we know it's got the wrong wings we know it's got obviously the fuselage problems you know the cargo door the nose the tail we know about them so what i'm going to try and do is do it 
a little bit of work on it to make it a little bit better and to make it a little bit nicer from a few feet away but obviously if you're going to get the calipers out and you're going to get you know pictures out and do direct comparisons then yes it's not probably going to be right but i think it'd be good enough for what we need to do with this one and hopefully you'll learn a few things along the way again how to do this quickly without messing around so from my point of view we're going to be strengthening it up uh, in some ways in other ways we're going to take the most simple route some of it isn't too bad like the engines going together I've played with the tail planes already the wings are going to need a little bit of work and obviously joining them to the body we want to make it a little bit stronger but generally the plastic again when you look at it like this it seems quite horrible but you get it together and yet actually it's got quite a bit of strength to it so it's not as bad as I think initially I thought it was going to be so uh, again hopefully we'll get away with a few problems like this one but anyway it should be a lot of fun it'll be one of those ones where you can follow me I know there's a few of you guys are doing Mac 2 kits as well uh, it's that thing you have a love for the brand um, this is my first ever Mac 2 kit properly um, and again I don't think it's as bad as perhaps they look on the sprue once you get them off and tidy them up I think it's absolutely fine but when you first are greeted by the box and the instructions you're like that's instructions well apparently it is you know so they are pretty much useless but again other things you know obviously this is slightly wrong even on that side so hopefully we'll be able to sort it out and take care of a few problems and we'll end up with something really nice at the end of it the whole point of this one is going to be in flight so we're going to have it as nice as if it's refueling the guy's going to help me out hopefully and do a few little aircraft it will be refueling from the back of it so it'll be one of those things that hopefully we can take around the shows hopefully they'll be back on again uh, but when we're doing the show circuit we can take it along and then you know each time we can have a different aircraft refueling off the back of it so and again it's a great thing with this is it's a tanker so you could have anything which has got the old drogue and shoot system with this one uh so it'd be a case of look you know you could refuel anything that has got a pointy probe on it you know uh of off its ilk so we're thinking phantoms buccaneers jaguars and again it doesn't just have to be ref stuff you could have european stuff onto there as well uh, to do refueling off it so I think it'd be quite an interesting one to have and it's something a little bit different and it's a little bit of a challenge but it'll be fun I should think it'd be absolutely fine anyway it's Tuesday so if you have got any questions chuck them over there into that area we'll make our way through let me just make sure we're working okay everywhere so that's good uh, hello to everybody into uh, YouTube land as well because that is on in here uh so that's all good uh hello from everyone over there and isn't it nice and warm it's definitely very very warm today i've got all the windows and doors open there's a lot you know i've got a canopy thing out the back and it's showing 32 in there at the moment it's a bit warm so you wouldn't want to be airbrushing at the moment uh so that's all good and everything's uh david says so why exactly is phil building this thing just for a challenge perhaps at the end of the day like we said a lot of people just say i just build brand new kits which is actually a complete lie because uh, clearly i don't um but again it's something to show a different way of modeling that's the whole point to do in this one the whole point sometimes is i'll do a build is to show you a particular technique the b17 is a classic example because i want to do that one in a polished metal type finish uh there's something very shiny show birdie and all the rest of it so that's why we're going down that route because i haven't done anything like that for ages we've done metal finishes but they've always been weathered or you know some other thing to it so it's in so every build i do i try and show a particularly different technique different way of doing it so forth and so on and that's why i don't just stick to using flooring models wash that's why i use oils as well and things even though it might be my chosen way of doing it it's different ways of showing things so working with something like this is to basically just prove that yeah there's various things you can do to improve kits and because i'm doing it on a mac 2 kit doesn't necessarily mean that you know it has to be a mac 2 kit you're working on it works for anything so if you wanted to make a conversion if you know there's something wrong with the kit and you wanted to fix it how you could go about doing it because all the techniques that i'm using is just what you use for normal modeling anyway so you know like using super glue as a filler it's quick it's fast um, and it's easy you know it's very straightforward so that's why i'm using a lot of super glue as filler on this thing to make our way through so i can lock doors up sand and flush and everything and you're just moving on with it none of this messing around with all of that we'll rescribe and detail them up a little bit later um neil says question for phil talking about different finishes any plans on doing battle damage extreme weathering on aircraft if you mean put it in like you know it looks like it's just been in a, a field for 10 years i don't like that particular thing i'm not into really heavy weathered and just thing i like my aircraft to be used but not abused as i always say so again it's a personal thing for it 
Um, there's people out there that do fantastic jobs on things like that who are a lot better at it than me. But it is, it's that, you know, it, it's a personal thing at the end of the day. I like to do them used, but not totally abused. I don't particularly like them when they've just looked you know abandoned and stuff like that again it's a very nice interesting subject to look at and say there's guys out there doing an amazing job but it's not something i'm into so that's why i don't tend to do it that way uh, do, 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 uh <laughs> rolling up your sleeves that's it that's what you do uh yeah well you could do an air crash investigation model and again this is with a bit where your model goes horrendously wrong you can turn it into a diorama uh, and stick it as if it's had a crash and things like that but it's not something I tend to do it's as I say I, I like aircraft to look nice and not destroyed if that makes sense right okay so in the questions we have a one here so Chris says hi, uh, hi Pill I think it means Bill uh, I recently dragged out my old Mac 2 B45 Tornado uh, which I built back in 1999. I have started the clean up and strip of the aircraft to join you guys with the building of the VC-10 Argosy. How uh, are the canopies and the clear sections? Mine are extremely cloudy and thick. I've tried to polish them with Tamiya, Tamiya compounds uh, and, they, and your brilliant sanders, but to no avail suggestions. Yeah, mine is exactly the same. If you have a look in here, uh, these are pretty horrible too you can't see much through them that's not going to be good any day you know to be honest this bit here is the same as the clear parts it, there's no real difference so you're not going to be seeing anything through this anytime soon it's not even flat it's yeah it's pretty horrible and this is what we're saying about detail and stuff like that do you want to go with you know literally painting the windows black and have it as just being an external you might remember when we did the um uh, 787 we had a decal for the windows which had a reflection in them which i don't know if it worked or not but it was an interesting concept uh, if i can dig that one out let's just have a look see if we can find that because again it was a little bit interesting way of doing it and when you say it it doesn't sound right but if i show you you might get a an idea if I can just find it where is it uh, hold on one second there it is hold on so in here somewhere we had again you see it at the front we had uh, the Thompson one uh, hold on let me just zip through here uh, uh, uh. We've got the, you can see the decal at the front here. So it has a decal for it. It's something you could possibly spray in afterwards. You could do look, so it has that effect of a reflection uh, onto it, which is something I thought about doing it on this one as well. You know, as I say, you can see it in there. I, it was one of those ones where it sort of grew on me. When I first put it on, I thought it would have been better just to have normal, um, you know, decals in there. But the thing is, there's no real interior detail in this thing so it was it made sense to just have something on there like that but again i don't know you guys can be the judge if you think it was any good but personally i think it would have been probably better just to have normal windows but you know you're into that realm then really hold on sorry wrong one with me oh god hold on but realistically i don't think you're ever going to be able to polish these up or change them or anything else that's the trouble the molds are far too thick and there is no crispness into there i don't think even if you was to sort of try and sand them and polish them and, and to get them up you know if you wanted to spend the time you may be able to get in there and actually cut the windows out and put acetate in there and actually make your own windows and go through it but honestly i think you know one option would be to vac form one and try and do it that way but again it's very very complex the way this goes in and from my point of view i need to reshape the entire front of this so we've got to play with various things to change the look of it as well so that's something which we'll hopefully try and sort out over the next few weeks but you know sometimes i think you just live with it Chart answers on a postcard. Do you want to paint them black and have them blacked out windows and do it? Or if you did, the trouble is when you're into 70 second scale, you could do with having a bit of detail there. If you're just using it in like 144 and stuff like that, I think you can get away with it. But really at this scale, you could do with a little bit internally. I was going to put the cockpit in there or the flight deck as well and have all the bits. Not that you're going to see it, but it just gives a bit of a look to it. Um, you know, I don't know. Again, 
I don't think there's enough to really see in there. That's the trouble. And right, okay. So uh, next up, we've got this is Dave. He says I'm currently building the Academy MiG 29A, and I would like to. If I show you at the same time, because it's an interesting one. There we go. Uh, I would like to do this color scheme. However, I cannot find uh, decals for it. Wasn't the thirty-second one in that markings when they Ravel did the seventy-second one? I'm sure it was in those markings. Um, uh, do you know of anyone that would able to print one off a set for the decals in 148 scale? To be honest, it's probably only the playing card uh, badge, which is on the other side, isn't it? I think on this one, it's in on that side. Have you got any more pictures? Yes, there it is. So it's that one uh, down on there. Okay, uh, that you'd need to offer up. I would say the rest of it's pretty straightforward with the colouring and the stuff like that. The markings isn't a problem, as I say, it's literally just that one. You could print off your own one and literally just because you've got the image as well, which is dead handy, and just rescale that one. Um, and then obviously away you go. This one on the other side is a little bit sorry, where's my thing? This one's a little bit of a complex shape as well to just try and do a mask. Um, but I don't know if one of the guys who got uh, cutters could probably cut you a mask. Uh, so yeah, I think it's uh, one of those ones where I don't know. It probably looks a lot more simple than it is, but you could possibly trace, print this photo out, trace that, okay, and then trace it onto a piece of 40 mil Tamiya tape okay and then cut it out and then stick it on we've shown doing things like that before so you could probably do that one as for this one that's a little bit more complex clearly so yeah you know there is obviously printers out there that will do it i don't know if any of the membership i know there's a couple of our guys on there that do do this type of thing have a word with them and see if they can do you one uh, for a price uh, and try it that way that's a little bit more complex rest of it no problem that's you're going to be your sticking one um again It'd be one of those ones to see if uh, one of the guys online, so if anybody's in there today, just seeing if any of the guys are in there. I uh, can't see anyone, uh, but uh, could do that. But it might be worth having an ask. They might see this program and then get back. If so, anyone can help out with Dave, shoot him a message, uh, and you could probably get away uh, with just doing that one, that one there. So that'd be quite good. Okay, so uh, Mark says, uh, Hi Phil, yesterday you asked a few questions about airbrush and someone mentioned the issues with the needle sticking. Uh, I used to get issues with airbrushes from time to time. Basically, after a few days, the residue of the paint uh, uh, after loads of cleaning. Uh, paint residue uh, on the seals, that was it. Again, this is one of those things um, where at the end of the day, it's the downside, I think, with the HNS triple seal system, because mine do it as well, and they lock. So what happens is you've got one seal, then another, then another. So technically, you've got two areas where the paint sticks to the needle, and it sandwiches it there, and it holds it. So if you're using something like uh, your needle juices out of there or super lube and stuff, that can prevent it from actually happening uh, and actually, you know, locking in there. But it's something that they all do. Yes, you can take the needles out and leave them out. I know a few members who do that pretty much as habit. So you take the needle out and you don't get the problem. The only trouble with taking the needle out is sometimes that the, uh, the seals can actually then swell a little bit more. So when you go to put the needle in, it's a really tight fit for the needle. And so the trigger action almost seems a little bit sort of stiff. Um, and I've done it before when I've gone away, I've come back in, you pop the needle in, it takes a little bit for the seals to get back into position. So although it seems like a simple fix to take the needle out, if it's out for a long time, it can actually cause more issues because then it's got to reseat itself, if that makes sense. If it's seated on the seal, you, then it's the perfect onto the needle, you've got the perfect seal. But if it's not, then you could have little bits of problems with it and with distancing and getting that donut effect and everything else doesn't seem to happen weirdly to eye water airbrushes now i don't know if that's because they use a different seal set in there um or whichever one it was the funny thing is it was i was told originally that they were um um teflon seals then i was told by hns that they're actually gore-tex they're made of gore-tex uh, so again, it's take your pick, but it does seem to be they changed them and they got a little bit more sticky when the triple seal came along. So, um, yes. Uh, that's it, guys. Yes, post them up in the forum. It just makes things a lot easier. 
Okay, Christopher says, another airbrush question. I'm looking at a trigger type of airbrush because I recently got a blister from airbrushing too long with my h and airbrush. Uh, anyone use one of these? I've seen them made for the Procon PS275 and the PS290. Um, yes, I've got trigger one as well. I've got the Neo trigger jobby. Um, my first question is, if you're getting a blister when you're airbrushing, you know one you're either doing it a really long long time but also i would look about how you're actually holding your airbrush and things like that purely because obviously the ergonomics are supposed to be that you can just hold them and it's a very light touch and everything if you're getting blisters it probably is you're gripping your airbrush way too tight you just need to relax a little bit uh when you're using it but as for trigger types we've spoken about this uh a few weeks ago and we were saying a lot of the members who have got um dexterity issues arthritis old age whatever um you know it comes to us all um and how they like these types of ones and we were talking about is it the grex airbrushes and stuff like that um and how they can help but i know a lot of people who've got you know hand problems and stuff like that who swear by the trigger ones and the trigger ones work really well the trigger ones tend to be a bit like an automatic so obviously you pull and you get just air and you can feel the notch and then the paint gets introduced so you have got a lock on the back of this one this one's just the neo cheapy thing i think it was um so you can lock the trigger to so you just get that little bit of a pull you can probably see the trigger coming forward okay so you know that's why you can actually do it just as you can all the other airbrushes the only thing that's different on this one obviously you don't have a mac valve built into it but i think some of the more expensive ones do but like we said before you know i don't think there's any difference from a usability point of view between a trigger and a normal airbrush you know it's not like the old horrible ones which were literally you touched it and it was all paint all air that's all you had modern ones now have that sort of automatic system so it's like a two-in-one airbrush and i can't remember which is but h and s actually make a series of them as well so is it grapho airbrushes or something but that one is, is quite nice um but yeah so again it's horses for courses whichever you get used to i tend to use this one for doing big jobs um so i tend to do like for priming and stuff like that we used it on the millennium falcon it was great you could just hose down onto it and away you go it's good for drying off as well it's got a slightly bigger needle set in this one i think it's got the 0.4 in this um so yeah again it's one of those ones where if you you fancy having a go with it i think you have to learn it again because like even for me when i'm trying to if i was trying to do with this this would feel really really alien uh to do it because my way when i spray with it if i show you my hand i'm a little bit weird as i spray this thing i like to actually do this so i hold the actual airbrush with two fingers on the side and it gives me i think better control than actually just like this because I don't know if this is a shooting thing shooters out there will know what i mean if you do with this you tend to pull down with the trigger but if you're into this one you tend to you know have more stability with it when you actually pull the trigger but again it's that thing you know i tend to double hand it and spray for doing tight work but it's learning muscle memory about where your finger goes and it may be the other thing as well is that the reason i like holding it like this is because i'm used to my finger doing this bit and now it's got nothing to do so it feels alien to have it down in here but it feels more natural to do it like this so again it, it's one of those ones where you just sort of you know you get used to what you use and everything else but i think you know trigger airbrushes have come a long long way over the last few years over the last 10 years they are not like the just hose down for dolls houses and stuff like that you can do beautiful little work with it and everything else just as you can so if you are finding probably you'd be a bit more comfortable moving to an airbrush with the trigger then you've got lots of options out there like we always say with it if you can have a go with one go to shows i know you can't at the moment but you know what i mean but if you know somebody who's got one as well pop round to theirs have a play with theirs see you know how you get on with it if someone can lend you one as well before you make a big purchase like on airbrushes to let you have a play with it see how you get on with it see if you like the feel of it and all the rest of it then you can do it like that as well so again it's one of those you know it's not as straightforward i think it's what you get used to some of them have bigger handles uh, as well some of them are quite small uh, it's just really what you get used to again like carl i think the trouble is is that uh the, the the triggers having larger needles you can put what you like into them for the manufacturers but because of the trigger ones 
I think from a sales point of view, they may be designed for bigger environments. Uh, that's why they tend to have bigger color cups on them as well. You never see trigger ones come with a tiny little color cup and stuff like that. Um, but again, I think it's because they're playing to their stronger market, perhaps doll's houses, a spray in, big scenery spray in, things like that as well. So I've seen some of them come with 50 mil color cups as standard. Um, like the H&S one, I think they do uh, a triggery type one or used to, and it used to have a 50 mil plastic color cup on the top. So yes. Uh, trigger ones with the paint control on the airbrush and a Mac valve on the airline makes it more comfortable. Absolutely. I think it's just one of those things. Again, it's what's just what you literally get used to us uh, into that one. Uh, guys talking about various things in there. Uh, so Gore-Tex is Teflon or PTFE. Oh, there you go. So they've changed their wording then. That's why that's uh, a little bit different on that one. I thought Teflon was what goes on frying pans and stuff. <laughs> I had a Gore-Tex for my motorbike, but uh, I didn't realise it was Teflon as well. Right, let me just scrim in here. Okay, so uh, Steve says, Hi Phil, just finished watching the F117A Nighthawk. I can just about work that one out there. Uh, so is, how would you tackle that model if you was to build it today? And now that your ta techniques have moved on. I think the only thing I would totally change is obviously would be obviously all the painting thing. I've built that kit a few times. Weirdly enough, it, when I did commission work, I commissioned, I must have built five of them now. One of them had everything thrown in. I think I say during the build of it. That one was pretty much out of the box. We used a little bit of photo etch, but I've done other ones where it's got full resin weapon bays, wheel ways, uh, bays and weapons for it and everything else. Um, again, I don't think it needs all of that. It's pretty good straight out of the box. If you want to use the color photo etch set like I did, that's probably a nice little touch for it if you're going to have it opened up. Um, painting wise, I would probably not do what I did in there though. I would probably go down with something like the rubber black, uh, Tamiya's XF85 as the standard color right the way through. But then I would probably do the technique uh, of using blues and things. The trouble with that model is though, like we were discussing the other day about stealth stuff, it's very flat. Uh, that stuff was the first generation of it and it was incredibly flat onto it and it was very thick uh, on the aircraft as well. Um, so I would probably have that and as weird as it sounds and we were talking about the other day I'll probably add a little bit of flat base to it as well to give it a really flat finish onto it. But again, you've got that thing you need to deckel over it afterwards. And if it's too flat, you'll never get that back. So again, it would be one of those. The weathering would probably be slightly different. And that one I use browns. Um, I would probably just go in and not actually use washes and stuff over it. But what I would probably do instead was with oils um, is to do that sort of mottling attack. So very similar to what we did to the um, Mobius was the last time we used it. So on the Mobius around where you actually put like a filter over the top and then you distress it. Uh, as well and it will just help to break it all up but the trouble with the stealth is it's very black and if you see them flying or used to see them flying they are just black there's not a lot of shape in there so what you're trying to do is almost fudge it to give it more scale look but it's very difficult when something is just a black brick um, so you're almost putting a little bit of you know what if into it by trying to break it up with panels and stuff when the reality is the thing didn't have any um, so always a little bit of a trouble with that one uh, Jim says, hi Phil, just watched your Saturn V build. Uh, I've just uh, finished painting the Revel 144 version. Did you seal the paint um, uh, and stencils? Uh, what would your advice to seal the Tamiya paints before you decaled for the finish? I don't think we did with that one. And don't forget that one was sprayed with car paint because it was just so big, that was the 72nd one that I did in the live shows, uh, what you see is what you sort of get with it at the end of the day. But no, I didn't seal it at all. It was just as was uh, come the end. So yeah, it's literally, if you would have seen those builds, it was done over that five day period in real time. So it, I didn't have time to sort of mess around with it and stuff like that. But also because we use car paint, that's pretty strong. We put then obviously the Tamiya over the top, no problem. I haven't seen that kit now for a while because obviously it's up at Doncaster with Matt uh, up on the mezzanine level. I just hope it's still upright because uh, so, I haven't seen it. But no, didn't seal it, just went straight through. 
Uh, Peter says, not so much a question, but I love the VC10 kit. Waiting for some Mr. Surfacer to arrive to carry on, but looks great. I had ambitions to have the flaps as well. I'm looking at though, oh no, can't. Can we have a Mac 2 SIG? No, we've got too many SIGs going on at the moment. That's the thing with that one. But yeah, doing the flaps and stuff on that one, it wouldn't be rocket science, but I think it would be a lot of work because you've got nothing there to work with. So you'd have to cut that entire section out and then it does that curve thing coming back. That's a lot of actuators and things in there to make that happen. But when you see them with them deployed, they look quite smart. Um, and I just thought it'd be quite nice if, you, if, it's, if you're doing it wheels down, then to have it. But I know you're doing yours as well, gear up as well. So you wouldn't have it down anyway. So from that point of view, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, Bob says, hi Phil, thanks for all your additional live shows uh, that you and the team have been providing throughout the lockdown. They've been the highlight of my day. Thank you, Bob. No problem at all. Uh, question, when using brass PE parts uh, for paint, what would you recommend primer for the best ad uh, adhesion uh, on the top coat? I used Tamiya Oxide Red Lacquer Primer over the weekend on the PE but it still had adhesion problems. Okay, when you're going over any type of um, metal finish, uh, the trouble that you have, there's not really much for it to grip to. There is a couple of things you can do. If it's just like undercarriage and stuff like that, is to attack them with a sponge just to give them a bit of bite. You know, we call it, well, Matt calls it keying in. Okay, it's to give the surface something for the paint to physically bite onto. Okay, now there is primers out there specifically designed for going over brass and photo etch and stuff like that. And again, the Mr. Surfacer, I know it's a little bit of a hit or miss. It seems to be like Marmite, this stuff. You either love it or hate it. To be honest, I love it. Um, but I know there's members out there who have had trouble with it with peeling and not adhering properly and stuff like that. But this stuff is supposed to be, according to the blurb in the book, um, specifically designed for better adhesion, especially on photo etch and brass. So you could give something like that a whirl and then that way when it goes down, it properly has got a good grip to it. But again, let it dry. But I don't think it hurts to get like an old sponge. And if you've got the old skinny versions of it as well for doing things as well, you can just give the brass bits a bit of a rub. Now, to be honest with you, and we were talking about it the other day, I used it on the brass legs for one, the Typhoon, the big 24th scale, which I know you guys didn't see, but afterwards I gave it brass undercarriage. Uh, but also I did it on the FW190. So we just gave it a light rub everywhere with a medium sponge, just so the paint's got something to actually get hold of and to get into the texture because the trouble with photo etch and brass it's very very glossy and very smooth um, and you know sometimes it's just not enough on there and if you've got something like masking or something else like that and it can easily peel it clean off purely because even the lacquer paints have still got nothing to physically grip to but if you give them a bit of sanding micro on the micro scale of things it's actually quite rough so it's got better adhesion onto it and then that can help you out so that's what I would probably recommend um, and it has been said, like I haven't got a bit here, clearly this thing doesn't come with any, but if I've got just a brass sheet, I will normally just run a sponge right over it even before I start bending it. That way it's got good adhesion onto it. You know, you don't want to do it obviously if it's got details or it's colour photo etch, but if it's just a brass sheet, I will whip around it with a sponge just to give it a bit of bite. Because I've had it happen to me loads of times where you do it, especially if you're masking, you peel off, lo and behold, you're straight down to brass again, you know, especially with photo etch. So it's easier to do something else like that. Um, so I'm just in there. Um, so David says he's got a grip an eye water grip on his ps290 so there we go so yeah you can put the grips the trigger systems onto them as well because i think as i say um i don't know if david's mentioned up there yes he has the eye water hand grip fits the procon boy trigger airbrush because again they're the same so yes that's the thing have a play with them trigger airbrushes if you haven't seen it you'll be fine uh danny says um oh and danny just to point out you were wrong you were saying about the bubble top on the 190 go back through history and you'll see how i've got a photo of a 190 with a bubble top versus the flat top mine was taut 
because I got a photo of a pilot stood next to it and it's taught when the canopy's open. Not all of them were. I know a lot of people say they were, but I got a lot of flack for it when I first released that video a couple of years ago. So that was the photo I went with and showed the guy next to it. So it is on there. Anyway, uh, I've then had an issue with Mr. Surfacer from the jar, but from the spray can, I've had adhesion issues. Again, I think, you know, sometimes you luck out it's easier than other times you know we've all been there you've had what you thought was perfect finish it's peeled there in you know the law of sod with modeling is definitely with us because every now and again something comes back and bites you for no right or reason it's just it happens to be a wednesday or something else like that i'm a great believer in that because you've done everything right as far as you're concerned and then it goes wrong and other things perhaps you've taken a shortcut and you've got away with it and then you think to yourself perhaps i don't need primer on this part and then a couple of weeks later you'll do it and it will go horrendously wrong so it's always a little bit of a hit and miss with these things uh graham says is matt going to be uh, uh, building the argosy yes he is so we can see how the kit looks trust me it's just like mine uh, but yes, he is. And Nathan's got a little something as well. And I know there's a few of you in there. We're not going to turn it to a SIG because I'm not being funny. We've got so many SIGs and group builds going on at the moment. It will dilute the proper group builds and SIGs that are going on because there's just so much going on. And everyone then runs out of time and it becomes a little bit of a rush at the end. So, uh, and over the years, we've had a lot of people complaining that we've had too many SIGs and group builds going on. That's why we sort of limited it to three SIGs, two group builds a year. Um, so people don't feel left out. Uh, Jeff says, hi Phil, uh, thanks for the email help earlier, no problem at all. Question for you, uh, special hobby kits are about to release a 148 scale Spitfire Mark 11 with the Flying Bomb. I quite fancy doing it. Have you got any experience with this manufacturer? Yes, I've got loads of them sat over there. Uh, and in theory, later on during the year, I'd like actually to do the fur, uh, Fairy Firefly. I've got the Mark, which one is that? The Mark 45 over there and the Korean markings. Quite fancy doing that one later in the year. Um, but special hobby, I've got other things down in there. I've got an X15, uh, various other kits. Think of them as limited run. Okay, so from that point of view, you might not get things like locating pins. Um, the sprues sometimes are only sort of really printed on one side. So instead of having detail on both sides of sprue, sometimes it might just be one side. But we've been looking at Special Hobby. Uh, what did I do the other day? Special Hobby, and it really was very, very nice. Something else I did. I can't remember which one it was now. Um, but yeah, it, it was just no one. I think it was a saw thing. Scrap that. Uh, but yeah, generally, they're very nice. They've got good detail, everything else. Just be aware that they are what I call limited run kits. So they might be a little bit basic in some areas. But sometimes they throw in a lot of resin parts. You usually get a bit of photo etch, things like that, to liven them up. But generally, basic modeling skills, you have no problem at all with them. They're, they're up there. It's not like it's really bad. It's not this. Don't think it's this. It's not this at all. And Nigel says, question, I uh, hope you're keeping well. I'm just wondering, can you use the Mr. Hobby masking sole on Vallejo uh, model air? Because I fancy trying chipping effect. Okay, hold on, which one are we doing? That's the uh, Mr. Hobby masking sole, which is, I can remember which one it is. So the sole is the non-stretchy one. That's how you do it. The thing is, they do two flavors. Okay you got these two down in here all right so you've got the normal one which is this one this one is like stretchy it's elastic -y. this one the sole is not so you can actually cut this one the sole R, with a knife and it doesn't shrink back when you cut it so you can use it for masking I've never got it to work but I know lots of people who do and they manage to make it work I just can't okay so that's it yes of course you can use it for chipping for both of them no problem at all that said though I think you're better off with the Neo than you are the Solar purely because it is a bit elasticy, so you can actually sort of when it comes away it, it sort of pings a bit and things like that gives a nice sort of look to it because it's stretchy it's more the traditional one than that one that one when it's on just sits there doesn't move at all so um, but you can but you can do the little trick which I do is get some aluminium foil roll it up really scrunchy side of it and then dip it in and then literally like dry brushing and then tap it over and then wipe it off the one that I did that for was the sea vixen all over the bottom of the sea vixen with the white coat so we want to have the chipping coming through uh, and stuff like that so have a look at that one that's probably the best way but nice kit the accurate miniature b25 mitchell it is a nice kit that one we like that one uh 
Hi Phil, I'm thinking of building a 172nd Catalina. Uh, from Scalemates, I've seen that Academy and Revel do one. Which would be a good one, do you think? Now, funnily enough, I have a Catalina up there as well. And it was going to be my build for the summer, but the way things are going this year, it's all gone out the window. But it was going to be my big build for the summer. Um, and I've got the 48 scale Catalina up there. As for 72nd, um, as I say, Academy do them. I built the Academy ones. I must admit, I've got a feeling the Revel one might be a rebox from someone. Somebody, anybody in live chat going to have a quick skingy for me on my own? uh that knows which one that is the revel one because i don't know whose kit that one is off the top of my head um so yes uh yeah if anybody's uh in live chat in both ways we can just whip through this one anyone got any ideas sorry i've only i haven't got the youtube chat up i will look at the youtube chat in a minute guys at the moment i'm just looking at the uh the flory family one yeah, don't do Marmite chipping. That's just wrong on every level. I'm only joking. Uh, but you say, uh, the trouble is, 72nd, all the kits are they're there. Um, you can add a lot of detail to them. I think the aftermarket guys are all over it as well. So you might be able to uh, get some more details on that one. Hold on. We'll hopefully come back to you with a bit more information. Uh, no, they're all about Marmite in there now. Okay, James says, Phil, with regard to your washes, would you have any recommendations on which ones uh, would be good for railways and rolling stock? Yeah, Grime. I'll be honest with you, Grime was designed for it in mind. Um, that's the whole point to it. Uh, as a lot of people know, my other half is massively is a complete train nerd. Not that you'll get her on here, but that's her side of it. So, um, but yes, the grime is designed really for it. It's more of what we call a traffic film. Um, that's the color we went for. So down the side, you get that brownie effect and everything else. So it's like dark dirt, but it's lighter. So you can mix it with dark dirt and with blacks and various things to do it. I did a Deltic years ago, we demoed it when we first released the dark dirt. So that's what that one was. Um, we did the Deltic and did all the weathering for it. You can airbrush it on and just rub it off and streak it around and stuff like that. You'd be absolutely fine uh no they're still talking uh revels rebox of academy's catalina thank you graham so there we go um yes and sell it don't bother just go with the academy one but you might find the Revel one's a bit cheaper but that's what it is that's what i thought it was a rebox so um yeah go from that one uh would be the option but i must admit i've got a real soft spot for the catalina i'd like to do it and you lot are on about marmite in live chat you're just all wrong it's vile it's bovril that's what you want plenty of yeast extract <laughs> a bovril extract instead no david sorry right but as for i must admit i we did try years ago to, to have a go with the actual marmite chipping and i just made a complete and utter bloody mess it was just not right and i did try with, with the proper stuff and everything and we tried doing the thing where people say about chilling it slightly first before you put it on um and i couldn't get it to work it just made a complete and utter bloody mess everywhere right okay so if we just jump into youtube chat hello good afternoon guys i hope you're all good down in there uh <laughs> if you thought the lockdown was bad try building mac 2 there we go i totally agree at the moment uh right okay um need one of those aprons are they available um to be honest with you i spoke about it on yesterday's show i've got a new printer um i've got an order in with them at the moment i'm going to see how that goes uh because we needed some other stuff for our well if we ever get stock back in stock but for the sander sets and the wash sets and stuff like that the promo stuff the stickers and posters that go with those um we're out of everything so anyway trying a new company uh they're supposed to be getting the stuff back to me next week if it comes in and it looks good, then what I'm going to do is I'll probably get some promo stuff and get them to have a go at this as well um, and just to see what they come back with. And if it comes out really nice and we can get a price that's about right, uh, then obviously we'll start doing a limited merch range again. Um, again, merchandise is really difficult for me because I don't use these second party companies that some people do where you're not even buying from me, you're buying it from them and I take a percentage per thing. We don't do that because obviously we don't try and make money on merchandise, if that makes sense. So what happens is, is that I buy it. 
So to buy it, we have to buy like 72 aprons. Uh, like when we do the polo shirts, we used to have to buy 72 each size at a time to get the right price. So we tend to do like a pre-order thing. Uh, then I get a rough idea of how many people want them. Don't charge you for it. And then when they come in, they go out throughout the year and we go along and then we get low, then we restock and go forth and so on and do it literally like that. So again, it's one of those things. We haven't done any merch like this for the last couple of years because uh, we had a bit of trouble as a lot of you know but we'd like to get it started again before you know in the autumn to get the entire merch range back up and going again because as I say I know a lot of you like it and also we try and come out with things that are handy like aprons are very handy like this has been my bloody saviour today otherwise I'll be covered and uh, do, 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 uh, greetings Poland hello Greece audio and video top notch happy modeler <laughs> it used to be years ago i know i'm slightly out with the um voice it has to be like that it's because the way my system works uh it goes around a long loop and i can't slow it down uh hello warm hair i must admit it's nice and warm here as well i'm polish hello polish uh phil uh paint nato black or flat black on the inside of a canopy uh oh what you mean the inside of the, the actual for the bc10 it's what i'm thinking of doing i don't know we'll see i'm going to do the cockpit very basic clearly and we'll see what we can see we'll, we'll test it together and we'll see what's available if it looks really bad then you know we'll probably just paint the windows over and we'll go again jesus the amount of sanding <laughs> uh, i've got a match 2 kit uh, and took it out open it briefly and then returned it to the shelf Honestly, don't be too put off. I know it looks really bad, but you know, like I've spent, I don't know, probably around about four hours now, four and a half hours, something like that, just sanding down, getting rid of the blemishes, having a look at it. And then once you've done that, and we will clean up with this a little bit later, because I've got a couple of reviews to do. And then, you know, you're no different from anything else you're working on. So just see this bit, it's a bit of fun, bit of mess, everything. If you can do it outside, because it is bloody awful. Um, but once you've got it in, like this wing here, which is, we had a crack in it, so we've taken care of that and sorted it out. Now it's no different from if it was anything else, just cut off the sprue, ready to go together. So if you can get past that little bit of Jesus, then you'll be all right. And you probably do need divine help. Uh, why do company bottles uh, with great details and then put instructions that you have to cover it up? Personally, I follow the instructions all the way through. What do you do? <sighs> Again, B17, classic example. You think, you know, I know a lot of you have probably or have seen or haven't seen. If you've seen it, you'll know. Sorry, these aren't stuck on yet. It's all still loose fit. Um, all of that great work we did in the inside. Yes, you've completely lost it. But if you have a squeeze through the windows you will be able to see it all from the areas that i've done but again i didn't go completely over the top if you were into a situation where you know you were you know you could see the various parts in there um perhaps you were doing a cutaway version or something else then you might want to go a bit more this is something personal to me again obviously i'm not having to go at anybody who does it but i don't like cut away anything i don't like armor that's cut away or anything else i don't mind it if you've got a system you can lift it off but i'm not a fan of that thing of having clear parts on the side purely because they normally mold them with all the ribs and everything that are in from you know what would be the normal gray plastic and they just do it in clear plastic it's never crystal clear so you can't see through it anyway and you've got all the former detail which again what do you do try and paint it but then it just oh, it doesn't work so i'm a great believer if you're going to do it cut it put a red board around it like you see in museums and have it as a cutaway model that looks a lot nicer than clear ones but i'm not really a fan of them either because i like planes to look like planes tanks to look like tanks so forth and so on and i have done it and if you have a look at ones like my um what do we do uh, just trying to think my king tiger so when we did the king tiger i've got it all apart in sections so you've got obviously the lower hull so you can see all the detail in there then you've got obviously the top part but unfortunately a lot of the details on the underside but you can't see it so it's there then you've got the turret the turret's got its top off and then we have the top so it's in four sections so you can see it all and it looks great but i'm still not a fan of it i don't think there's an easy way i've seen guys do amazing things the guy who has it where it actually is all complete and then it all lifts up it's all on like legs and it lifts apart so you can see inside it is actually a genius the guy is should be made a saint because it's very clever the way he's done it and to make it all go back so it fits perfectly as well yeah hats off my tip my hat to you gentlemen you're a star 
but normally a lot of people have it on like different things and legs and I, I don't know I just don't get all of that I prefer things to look like they should be and again that way you don't have all the interiors but like we said before some of us and me included I like the engineering and a kit I like to see how the real thing would go together so especially when you are doing full interior tanks you get an appreciation of the mechanics and the workings and the conditions perhaps that the poor sods inside have to endure in battle and stuff like that so when you're doing the b17 i have an appreciation of how cramped it is inside one i've never been in one so i wouldn't know but i imagine for me being like six foot three it must be a nightmare to try and crawl around in one of them purely because now i've got a you know built the interior i can see how cramped it is so it gives you a bit of an appreciation instead of just having two halves bump goes together and out you go but again that's just my sad side of it uh phil uh have you built a space shuttle if so could you show us oh, jesus you're gonna make me get it down aren't you i could just show you the picture but it's a bit more impressive hold on let me move some stuff out of the way so yes i built one <laughs> hold on let me just try and get her down Ugh. okay right excuse the dust but it's a few years old now but yeah we did one so we have, ooh, 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 if I can get it off, don't know if she's going to come away, she has, just about. So yes, we did it and it's got all the bits on the bottom. So this is the Rebel one, I've done it as Atlantis, we've tried to redo the windows on the front. There's a video build of this by the way if you are wondering, but this is what I call my oxygen tank job. But it is huge, but we often talk about this one because you know, I know you probably can't see it, but there's photos all on the site. Go and have a look around the site, you'll see it. But it is, it's one of those ones where it needs to have the detail all in it to go round uh, to do all the, the bits and pieces. But yeah, it's all right. It's just a very, very large lump. I am not going to try and put it back together. But yes, so there's that one. And it sits very proudly up against my wall, just up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it down here because it's too big to get back up and it's very fiddly and I've just noticed that the plastic on one of the things is broken so I have to do a quick repair job on that one. But yeah there is a, um, a full video build on that as well uh, somewhere. Uh, hold on. Let me just bring up to make sure it is up there. I don't know which area it's in. Let me check. Let me check. Come on. <clears throat> right down the bottom here. Okay so uh, doo, doo, doo. oh yeah this is when i was very young there we go so this was it it's actually when we just first moved in so this video must be about seven years old now i can tell that because if you look behind me one i look about five and secondly you can see we've got only one spray booth in the corner but yeah we had a bit of fun with that one clearly as you can see trying to put it all together it's very modular but the thing is it's very basic so just going through the motions of putting it together is a bit of a nightmare. So as you can see down here, this is where we went to the painting stage. So it's got about five or six different colours of white uh, and very, very light greys on it as well, just to try and break it up. Yeah, those decals, they were absolute nightmare. And again, you can see in there, it's where she was coming together. And there it is, finished. There it is. That's before it got dusty. So yeah, he's all right a big old lump very very big there we go but yeah we went through the motions right the way through you can see again didn't really weather it or anything else like that because i have you know envisioned it's you know pretty good just out of the box so yeah there we go something a little bit different okay uh doo -doo -doo. Uh, uh, sanders turned up at last week thank you so much sorry tom it took so long obviously i send them out literally on the day as soon as they're in uh they go out like all orders posted don't forget yesterday i know it was in the us as well uh was a public holiday so no post yesterday so i took them all out this morning so everything that was posted that was ordered by 11 o'clock went out uh this morning hi mate how's it going how come you don't have a corona haircut uh that's because i cut it myself weirdly and it's easy i literally just stick it on number was it four and just shave my head <laughs> uh look i even had a shave over the weekend it's growing back now though 
Uh, how many uh, uh, right now we're not reading out stuff like that because get into trouble um, Phil built the monogram that was what it was it was the monogram shuttle with the booster set and everything else uh, uh, Phil will the patches be part of the merch uh, you bring him back I don't know the pack to be honest with you the patches didn't really sell that well um, you know it's one of those ones we d I wasn't sure how if they were gonna go and they're very expensive because obviously our colors it was I don't know how many it was now it's something like 12 colors for the printing of it well, it's not printing it's the weaving of it and um, it costs an absolute fortune so what I'm saying if you just have like a logo of two colors it's quite you know do but when you're dealing with sort of I think we got it down in the end of it to 11 colors we want to do it 27 to start with and it's going to cost yeah horrendous uh, 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 Terry thank you very much he said he enjoyed the space shuttle does anyone know if you can mask over uh, Vallejo metal colors you can yes the metal one crikey look i've got to move this thing now jesus you mean this stuff that one yes you can but like i always say when you're masking over anything detack it first and when we say detack we mean just when you've got your tape okay i do the old back of the hand trick or well, back of the hand or your forearms always a good one and they just get some skin cells and oil then come along and then stick it to your model because what you've done is you've taken off the big tear effect to it but also it will still stop it from leaving tape marks on polished surfaces okay so you detack it till it's almost not there and then you can just put it on and away you go uh, hi phil are you using two-part epoxy to join the pieces uh with the very thin plastic okay so plastic for this weirdly works really really well with extra thin and with the old rebel contact here because i've tested it on a few bits already uh this is to be honest would be two of the wheels and i can't even get it apart it's properly i mean yeah it's not going to go anywhere there and we've just done this one here with the contact here before we came on air and it's really really good this plastic again i call it plastic i hope it is could be uh but again it's one of those ones where it's very very soft it's very porous so the extra thing gets right into it that's one thing you have to remember when you're gluing these parts together if you're going to come along and going to put that extra thin along the, the entire seam to weld it all in be advised the chances are it's going to sink because it's going to sink into this plastic a lot okay so you know it's one of those ones epoxies have their place don't get me wrong but if i, if I can avoid it on kits like this i do because they dry really really hard and you know they can give you other problems the other end as well because this plastic because it's quite soft it could melt it if it generates heat i'm not sure what would happen with it so you have to play it a little bit safe as i said i've been using um you can see down in here we've got a bit of a i've still got to finish this bit off to be honest uh that's it you can see we've got a gap you can see my finger in the background because that's what that is there's a gap so i've just used ca glue and then just gone round. so i tacked it in place and then came to this side just put a big dollop on hit it with a kicker and then we've sanded it and that's gone and that's the to be finished off one and this is the one that's completely finished and that is baby bum smooth it's very very nice i've got to go around and put the door back in clearly but you know that's it but as you can probably see the trouble i've got is the doors are nothing like it this was i was the first one that went down oh that's not too bad and then obviously i went to put this one in it was like my god look at that that's well out so anyway i've got to finish sanding that one off yet um but again when you're sanding don't sand it and let it get too hot so if it's getting hot and it's feeling warm stop sanding give it a break so that's why i stopped on the other one but you can see in there it's actually very very smooth it's gone in there very very nice and again by the time we just pop in some you know scribing again we're going to put in some access panels under here we're going to rivet it as well because i like riveting uh it'll look all right i think it's one of those again if you look at your model and you're thinking jesus what you know take a step back and just think right let's just get it together and this is what we're doing on this one so a case of super glue kicker whatever it takes let's just get it together 
okay then we'll do the niceties afterwards all right so you just get the basic thing in there get it together then you think to yourself right okay it's now solid we're good to go so now we can come back and add the little details to it so we can rescribe we can re-rivet we can then add little bits and pieces here there and everywhere as it needs it okay but to start with especially on a kit like this don't overthink it just get it done this thing's the quickest way otherwise what happens is you just lose your mojo and your will to live and you're thinking oh god this thing's horrible and it's a nightmare and all of those and it's like you know it's because you're overthinking it just get it together uh hi mate do you want to do some uh live shows together at some point i think it'd be interesting for our subscribers uh for us do you have a channel then scale hanger 182 who are you that's the thing uh it'd be cool to build uh, made, uh, to meet at telford to be honest with you it's not this thing i, I don't I don't do I get asked a lot to do podcasts and stuff and it probably sounds like I'm really arrogant because I don't do them but I don't like talking about myself which seems stupid when I do it every day on here because it, it, I always feel like it sounds like I'm off promoting Flory models somewhere else and I, I don't want it to be seen like that because I don't even really promote Flory models as a thing I do this because I enjoy it but um, but yes shoot me a message and I'm sure we can sort something out not a problem uh, do, 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 do. uh right okay let me just flip back to the flory side and just check on here make sure we are all good let me just refresh this what time are we on 405 okay tell you what we'll go as long as the questions keep coming i'm happy to sit here if you guys are anyone else got anywhere to be <laughs> hi phil question if you're doing a corsair f for you one again oh my god flashbacks don't make me do another one how would you go about doing the chipping uh, and the paint job now i take it then andrew you've now been and watched what is my nemesis build uh for guys who haven't seen it you can all go and see it. it's free to watch don't forget there you go we're talking about shameless plugs shameless plug you can watch for free if i can find the link there we go where are we that's it uh if you go you can't watch any of these these are all cost you admittedly but if you go into classics and i added a couple in here the other day as well if you're not up to date in here these are all full video builds some of them are like just short four parters some of them are ten parters in here okay and we've got every, all of these you you're free to watch this is the one we're talking about okay this is the trumpeter because obviously this was well before the this would have been circa 19 sorry no it'd been 2009 something else like that 2010 something about 10 years old anyway uh, down in here uh, and we threw everything aftermarket so it's got aftermarket um, cockpit it's got aftermarket engine aftermarket cows aftermarket guns aftermarket wheel wells oh jesus and was it a nightmare to go together anyway the big thing was was that also oh it's also uh, fully lit as well i use fiber optics so yeah anyway the thing was was that the chipping for the weathering just went horrendously wrong i couldn't get the right balance um, I'm hoping my weathering now has come on a little bit better um, back then I didn't do that type of weathering what I was trying to achieve was that multi layered chipping as in some of it was down to bare metal but most of it was in the primer coat so that had on it was it Tamiya XF4 um, that type of yellowy color underneath because I wanted that chipping to be the primary chipping and then it to have the other one below it but to get that you sort of double chipping so and that's where it was going wrong because when I came to take it off we were talking about stuff that's from a scrapyard and really abused aircraft that's what I was ending up with and I don't like it so that was a case of right take it all back scrub it back and then we'll go again and again and again what I would probably do now to be honest with you is pretty much similar way but I wouldn't use the salt chipping technique I would probably use because again they weren't around then is actually a real chipping agent which I've got the ones over there like a medium chipping agent or a heavy and I would use that and put it on um, with a brush in the areas I wanted to and then use that but in those days if you want to chip in your only option was either pick at it or mask oil or the old salt technique using rock salt so i went down the rock salt and again it just yeah went wrong all wrong to be honest it didn't turn out too bad in the end fourth time's a charm apparently so that was the trouble with that um so yes sorry i've lost my thing now uh where are we okay let me just hit refresh on that and then we just need to change page 
hold on, we're getting there. Okay, David says, Phil, can you provide us with an update on how much longer you'll be doing uh, the shows every day during the COVID-19 thing? Is the UK getting back to normal yet? Uh, if so, when will these shows go back to normal? <sighs> Again, this is, you know, it's a bit odd for me because <laughs> how's the COVID affected you? For work, nothing at all, because my day is like this anyway. Uh, I live in lockdown. Um, the problem I'm struggling with COVID, to be honest, is on the sales side of it, of stock and stuff like that. And obviously with the PM side of things, that's where we're all affected. But generally for me, it's not. I don't mind doing these live shows. If you guys enjoy the live shows and stuff like that, I'm more than happy to do it. But the only thing, like I've said before, you know this it sounds funny but encroaches into my normal day-to-day -day stuff as well so building time as i'm here talking to you i'm not actually recording for films and stuff so it just depends on where you want these to be um i don't mind doing them live answering questions and stuff like that i quite enjoy to be honest it's my you know, way of talking to you guys um but again it, it's one of those i know a lot of people were finding them a bit over the top um and we even lost some members to it who were like you know I, you know you should be building and i disagreed they left there you go uh but again it's just one of those things at the end of the day if you guys like me doing it what i'll probably do is put up a poll and we'll see how we go i'm acutely aware don't forget i get paid to do this and matt does but the other guys don't so andy's got a full-time job nathan as well the other guys they've all got things to do so from that point of view it's very difficult for them to come in and do it you know for me it's a little bit different i'm here he can't come in. Is he tried to talk? Does he not know we're online? Sorry, this is Mr. Ball trying to get in. But the thing is, I haven't got Skype set up. <laughs> what? Hold on. Hello. Can you call? No, I can't because I can't bring you in because I haven't got Skype on the system. Sorry, everyone. This is Mr. Oh. Matt Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna come and get crashed, but obviously not. I can't do it because it will screw the system up. If I try and put Skype on now, I think it will throw everything because I've got Skype running on the system. All right, mate, no worries. I'll leave you to it. That's all right. We'll get you in all tomorrow. Right. Matt will be on tomorrow afternoon. What time are we doing tomorrow? Uh, normal, I think. Two till three, is it? Or yeah. Three till well. Yeah, all right. Well, if we say uh, uh, three, three, till two, three till four tomorrow with Matt, Matt will be on tomorrow. <laughs> right. You go in the Have chat, get yourself in chat. <laughs> Good bit. Sorry about that. As I say, I could have done, but the thing is, normally, as you say, we have Skype running up and then Skype feeds in. But if I try and start, start Skype now, I might lose you. I'm not, not going to take that uh, risk at the moment. But anyway, as for that, look, I'm quite happy, like we said, we were going to run it all this week uh, till the end of the month, okay? The COVID builds for the SIGs and stuff like that, we're going to run to the end of June anyway, okay? It's just that, as I say, every time I, you know, do these, it just takes us a little bit away from these. And to be honest, I do have a family as well that uh, does like me to be around some points. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of those bit of a balancing act, family life doing this and everything else but as long as you guys don't mind we've spoken to Matt about this and we were saying about the Saturday night shows we're probably going to do those quite a lot because it's quite good as long as you guys don't mind us doing a bit of work at the same time uh, it's absolutely fine but I quite enjoy, enjoy doing the live stuff I always have so um, that's that's the thing if you want us to do it then uh, let us know and we will do it we'll put up, put up a poll in the actual forum I'll do it tomorrow um, and see what you guys like to do if you prefer us doing the live stuff to the recorded stuff to the vlog stuff because obviously I used to do a lot of vlogging before which obviously you guys YouTube would never have seen but it used to be a lot of just me running around with the camera all day and doing things like that so again it, but it, you know I am your civil servants people almost so uh, if you want me to do these just let me know and as I say you know if you enjoy the shows give it a like if you don't give it a dislike that also gives me a bit of an idea of what I'm doing is right or wrong uh, and we can go from there uh question just used uh, a filler for the first time do you have to seal it before uh you pin wash it uh oh, sorry a filter not filler sorry um i would if you put a filter down i would then seal it because the thing is if you put the pin wash it could affect your filter especially if you're trying to get your pin wash off so i would seal it never take the the, the actual uh 
um, risk if you like. I'm a great believer in, if you've done your model and you're really happy with it, put a sealer coat onto it. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's an acrylic clear coat or a lacquer one or whatever it is, because you've got then pretty much a save point. You know, so it's like in a game, you get to the save point, so you're just going to start from there. So let's assume your pin wash goes horrendously wrong. You can just get the thinners out, wipe it off and start again. But obviously, if you've got a filter on there, it's not protected. You're going to be eating into that as well. OK, so that's the thing. The only upside not to doing it is sometimes you can come out with nice blended weathering effects. So if you're using things like weirdly, my wash works really well with oils and I know what it is. The, the clay absorbs the linseed oil uh, and the actual oils themselves into the wash and it gives some very nice subtle effects right the way through so when i put a wash on i don't tend to overcoat it but then because the wash is just clay it doesn't get affected by enamel thinners onto it or everything else you can brush it with enamel thinners it won't move it just stays put okay because it doesn't really rehydrate it like water would and things so it is that thing so sometimes you can mix them to get nicer weathering effects but if you're really happy with what you've got i always say don't take the chance give it a clear coat leave it for 24 hours then carry on with your weathering i'm a great believer of doing it with between pigments as well so if i'm doing my model i will literally especially armor give it a flat coat because my pigments will grip better to that than it would be anything else on there but also if the pigments aren't going right i can wipe them off and go again uh, and it's not too much of a problem uh right okay let me hit refresh on here let me just refresh that one uh james set of washes duly ordered yes the washes are back in stock but it's very very limited guys it's only because i got some washes from one of my said uh people i supply sent me some washes back to get me out of a hole um so we've managed to make up some more wash sets uh have you uh, another question have you ever used a metal pr uh, primer through an airbrush i found it produces cobwebs spoken about this um i got in a lot of trouble with my ex many years ago because i was making cobwebs for the kids by using uh, mr surfacer 500 or 1200 neat through an airbrush and just blast it maximum air pressure and you can make instant cobwebs for halloween downside is it does take the paint off of everything you spray it with so don't spray it around your house everyone but yeah that's all it is it's too thick you need to thin it more turn your air pressure down although that way you'll stop making cobwebs but yeah for halloween i did it for the kids many years ago and got in a lot of trouble uh, uh right okay sorry the guys are down in there that's fair enough sorry just trying to do it uh bob says hi phil uh on a previous show you mentioned a paint conversion chart is there a chart uh, in the forum that would provide guidance for Tamiya paint mixes with uh, RLM colors? Thank you. Spoke about this one the other day. Again, I've got this. It's well out of date. Honestly, go to the IPMS Stockholm. I'll give them a shout out. Not that I know them, but they. I've had this since 2002 and um, it's been my Bible for all paints and stuff like that. Um, there is other ones as well, free ones on, online and everything. Again, we've spoken about RLM colours. Nathan will back us up on this one. It's a bit subjective because some people say the colours are wrong and quite vocal about it. Other people say it depends where it is. We always say it's close enough. Okay, but again, it's one of those. Do your little bit of homework on it and, and you can go from there at the end of the day. But have a look at the IPMS Stockholm site because that converts not only RLM, Federal Standard, British Standard, everybody else's into Tamiya, all the major manufacturers. I had a look at it. I must admit for the back on, I'm probably going to end up printing it off again and perhaps do myself a new Bible, as I call it. I could do with an update because things a bit out of date. Uh, James, I started using Mr. Prime Surf Sir 1000 recently, mixed it 50 50 with self leveling thinners. When I sprayed my model, I got fish eyes in some spots. Could this be color areas beautifully? What am I doing wrong? Is it the mix? Again, this is one of those strange ones because I've had people report this back for me, and I've never had it happen to me, so I'm only speculating on it. Check your model check you clean it as well so if you if i was going to be painting this now what i would do is i would get my cloth we spoke about this last night as well and i would give it a run over everywhere with a little bit of airbrush cleaner literally right away you can get things like plastic prep and all the others you know what i mean but anything you use to clean the oils because when you're handling your model it can pick up stuff 
also the environment you'd be surprised what travels on the environment let's face it with the covid19 thing going on now i think we're all acutely aware how things can travel you know we've all seen the things of people coughing and microscopic droplets of god knows what flying through the air well think about your household as well you might have things in your household that you think would never get on your model like grease cooker grease things like that you're never quite sure deodorant you know all of those things could probably have a big effect on your model so if you give it all a wipe down first let that dry off and then paint it you should be absolutely fine one thing i would say though is when you see me spray and have a look at them all recently especially i've tend to show them a lot more in like when we did the discovery i did it warts and all um so you got like half an hour just me spraying I talk about it a lot when you first put down that initial coat i call it a dusty coat so you're just coming in with your airbrusher okay when you're in there you're medium distance so you're not up close okay you're a bit and you're just dusting on a light coat now this coat you're putting down would actually probably feel like that it's not going to be smooth at all okay but what it does do it prepares the area for the next coat going on so then the second coat will actually what i call a heavy coat will go right over it okay and that then will have something to grip on the previous one but also because you put that dusty coat on four you probably won't get that fish eyed thing now the trouble is if you're coming in and you're just going in straight with a wet coat right over it if there's something in there it's going to want it just, just like repelling it that's when you're going to get it and you're going to get the bull's eyes on there your fish eyes and it's just going to be pushing away from it and to be honest i can show you something here which i was going to save for a different show but seeing as you guys are here this happened to me the other day okay so you can probably see this here so it's repelled off now i know what this is is because i used a um uh the mr dissolve putty to get rid of all of the uh locating pins that are in it i just mr puttied over it and away we went and then what happened was i thought it'd be quite a clever idea so i've got a fly in here bugging me okay i thought it'd be a clever idea just to give it a coat of lacquer thinners right the way over this to help melt the plastic you know and to you know melt the actual surface uh, the uh, dissolved putty to level it out like a self-leveling thing okay now i thought it was dry and then came in with some just uh, primer over the top and it did that and that's because it reactivated the thinner underneath and then just pushed it away and it's pushed it away from all of these down in here so all this is is really the thinner pushing up through the pa the actual primer so it's pushed the primer out of the way and it's just because it was obviously around each one of these bars and then it's literally just gone bump and pushed out bump and pushed out as we've went over with it it's dried and to be honest you probably never know and if i just gave this another coat of gray over the top it wouldn't be a problem because to be honest i've done it on this one uh, but yeah that's actually what has happened in there it's just it's reactive with what was underneath it and pushed it away and this is a lacquer paint with lacquers but it's just pushed away the primer from the edges because it wasn't totally dry before the next one went down but i thought that'd be quite an interesting one to show on a, a specific thing but that's exactly what has happened with that one so at the end of the day it's just your surface it's surprising because i thought there was no problem with that and i assumed it was dry and i put it on there and then i put it down to dry and i watched it and suddenly one went and it was literally like one two three and it just did the entire row one after the other they all just released and went with it and it's a case of yeah brilliant so yes that's what that probably is but again dry coat first then put your wet coats on once those are dry uh phil here's an idea how about having a theme for each day's show uh sort of like wednesdays is discussing for new model kits why not have other shows through which on to be honest we used to do it um i suppose this is this fly is gonna die it's gonna die surely um well, i used to have theme days that's what we used to do we used to have pick a theme and we used to talk about it each one but after 20 years to be honest with you i'm running out and they got a bit repetitive because the same ones keep coming up because people say talk about metal finishes and you're like again we did that literally three times last month so that's why we sort of ended that one uh, and go through it like that but again it's a good idea it's just trying to keep these fresh and so it's not samey samey every single day but i know what you're getting out and it's something we need to think about hi phil i really do enjoy the live shows so big thanks to you and the flory team thank you brian question where would be the best place to try and find decals for the uh was it mh 124 scale bedford truck uh kit from years ago Whew. 
if you're talking an old school decals then yeah uh, I have the short wheelbase tipper uh, from a swap meet purchase and it's missing the decals plus I want to buy a set for a fuel truck that they did they were never officially imported into Canada as far as I could find out I think your best bet with that one Brian is to literally post up in the wanted section on the forum and see if anybody can help out there apart from that you might be just trying to find generic ones if it's for a Bedford truck um, I'm assuming you know you can get like generic 124 scale decals for other things and you could fudge it that way um, you know you can get like generic numbering generic lettering stuff like that uh, and perhaps you could try and do it that way that's all I can really suggest on that as I say when things are out of production for a long long time chances are the decals probably be rubbish anyway so we're back to that what we talked about yesterday about decals yellowing and is it worth trying to retrieve them uh, and trying to find it that way so yes bit of a thing on that one okay so uh how are we all doing over in this one uh, duh, 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 uh where are we uh, the hell there's some weirdos in there today right okay it's all right you guys probably can't see it because it's already been hidden but that has to be uh uh okay uh do 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 hi phil enjoyed watching the live shows it's been a great learning new techniques and having enjoyed the older builds uh that are on youtube uh cheers keep up uh, the sanity <laughs> absolutely all good uh no problem at all uh, uh that's it where are we uh the guys are obviously answering questions we're making our way through uh cleaning down your model uh, again i think you know we were talking about finishes and one of the questions came up the other day about people saying about getting bits in their paintwork you know firstly you can obviously sand them out when they're in your paintwork and just re blow over it and go again but also it's that thing about making sure you've got rid of all the dust and the debris because that is also can be kicked out not only on there but in your spray boot classic example of what not to spray in because that's just a mess and it's horrible you know and also like you hit your filter i don't know if you guys will see that but you get dust come off it as well if you've got an extractor run your extractor for a good sort of 20 minutes before you spray because what you end up doing as well is hoovering the stuff out of the atmosphere um so it goes in there but again you know a clean workbench clean and tidy as well makes for a good uh, uh environment to be in uh, Phil, do you know uh, which version of the F-14 Tomcat was flown by Maverick in Top Gun? It would have been an A back then. It would have been the F-14A. Because uh, the B didn't come out until well after that. But yes, it was the A back in those days. Um, uh, really enjoying the live shows that's all good yeah the guys are saying it was the f14a uh, oh that's the other thing getting a lot of people asking about the airfix um tomcat don't they're the old 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 ones they're just a, a rebox and yeah they're horrible question sorry if i missed it but are hataka blue line paints uh uh tamiya hybrid acrylics or water-based uh, I do believe they're water-based. They're not actually a alcohol-based one. I think they are a water-based. As I say, Matt, we'll ask Matt tomorrow on it. I haven't used them personally. I'm waiting to get my hands on some. Uh, we're looking at stocking them on the PM store as well, which we'll obviously talk about tomorrow. Um, but again, it's one of those ones. It seems to be very, very nice. And instead of having the acrylic airbrushing one, you might just get the blue one because you can thin it to the own consistency, which is something I prefer to do than rather having one that are just bottled up, ready to go uh doo -doo -doo -doo. phil uh, have you previously done the academy 148 scale uh f22 raptor sorry uh you have sorry uh any experience with the hasagawa version of it never did the hasagawa because i never liked it the hasagawa one's got that god awful raised ram texture to it which i think is completely overdone 
Um, I preferred the Academy version because it's all underneath. I know it was many, many years ago. It was over 10 years ago I did it. And I put the black box cockpit into it. Or was it the Wolfpack? Wolfpack cockpit into that one. Um, and again, it doesn't really need it because there's not a lot going in there. But it was one of those ones. But um, yeah, I just found the Hasegawa ones, the RAM tape was really really pronounced and i think it's too pronounced for it if you look at raptors normally although they're very silvery and very nice looking they don't have massive round tape chunks hanging off of it like they seem to show it on that one question did you uh i think have any good experience with kitty hawk kits amazingly i know i take the piss out of kitty hawk and they are a handful and a half to put together and their instructions are usually wrong and their kits can be horrendous doing a review with I have built a few um, and I don't think fun is one word I would use to describe them but detailed okay and I have to say they are getting better that's the whole point Kitty Hawk's Mirage 2000 and I know there's all the rivet counters out there all over that one but actually built up to be a really nice aircraft um, and I've got it sat down there um, but again it's one of those ones where it like I said the other week when I did the review of that Mirage 2000 if I think if Kitty Hawk took a step back and then went right okay is this kit okay let's just double check everything they would save themselves a lot of egg on the face with a lot of their builds like their instructions being wrong and misnamed and labeled in this day and age there's no really excuse for that it only takes somebody to proofread it for God's sake and again you know some of their parts and various things are you know quite frankly a little bit weird how they go together and then quality control as well just needs to make sure everything's okay if you've got a bad one then don't sell it because i end up with it for a review which makes them look bad but generally like i always say and we discussed it the other day talking about the jaguar 48 scale jaguar i built it um i built it all open so actually it makes a really nice kit if you try and close it up it's a real handful because nothing fits the f-35 classic example do it all open it's actually create a pretty nice kit close it all up it's a handful you know so it's just those little things but i have to say kitty hawker seem to be getting better and better and better and occasionally they slip but generally they're going in the right direction they're a new company i always give them a bit of space because they do some really really interesting subjects and to be honest with you it's probably why i give them a hard time with my reviews is purely because i want to have a really nice voodoo and then you look at it and you're like oh jesus screwed up f35 really not oh yeah you know you know what i mean it's just that they've got really interesting subjects and then it's like ah it's like the jaguar classic example brilliant jaguar it's got the wrong weapon set in it it's like ah okay uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. uh question uh how would you sum up the hobby boss b24j uh the large scale one again I, it's a really nice kit but then again i think it depends where you want to put it in the market it's a hell of a lot of plastic for the money there's not a great deal of detail but and this is where i often say when you're into the really big stuff sometimes you need that level of detail to stop it looking like a toy okay so you're looking for those areas to be really nice like engines you know because you're going to see them if it's a 70 second you're not really going to see it 48th iffy but you know classic example the engines in this i think are really are a weak point of the kit i've got them down here like that. they are here painted on the sprue um and again i think when i reviewed this kit one of my points was was that you would expect the engines to be really really nice on this because of its 48 scale and it's not they're a weak spot now hindsight i've painted them dry brushed them and actually with a metally color with the you know the cowlings on and stuff like that you can't really see much going on there would have been nice perhaps to have the option with the cowlings off to show an engine it's just that i feel that it would have been really nice if this kit because of the layer of the detail on the surface it with the engine it would have been really nice to have that as well the rest of it i think you can pretty much get out of it out of the box but yeah definitely from that point of view but again the trouble is with the hobby boss one that b24 because it's so big it needs gorgeous surface detail to help break it up and to give it that good scale effect and stuff like that and it is just a little bit yeah it just needs that little bit more but again this is where you come in as a modeler you can add all that detail yourself you can go through detail it up aftermarket stuff is filtering through for it now uh, so you can actually add all the bits and pieces to bring it up to the level that it really could do with let's face it 
Uh, is there a market for selling finished models? And dare I ask what price range you would charge uh, for selling for a Phil Flory original model? Okay, well, obviously, as we spoke about yesterday, I'm not telling you how much I charge and make for things, clearly. Um, I was a, well, still am, I suppose you call it, professional model maker uh, for 10 years, well, seven years before I started doing this full time properly. Um, and I had commissions and that's what, you know, was my primary income. I didn't have another job. So from that point of view, that's what I did. And it was just commission works. Often, you know, it gets spoken about. It's it's an entire show on its own. I did a video a couple of years ago talking about it because people asking me, how did you get started and stuff like that? It's probably on YouTube somewhere. You can go off and see it. And I sat down for an hour and discussed, quite frankly, how uh, the Internet's almost killed off commission work because everybody thinks they're a professional model. You go on YouTube, uh, sorry, eBay, professionally built model. What's your full time job? You earn every bit of your money as a professional. That's what I define as a professional award winning modeler. Absolutely. But the bit where people say professionally built, and you look at it and think by who, you know, that's the thing. Again, as a professional, how much would you be charging if you're a professional plasterer? How much are you going to charge per hour to plaster someone's room as a professional modeler how much are you going to charge to build somebody a kit like i always said straightforward out of the box kit it's going to be about 40 hours work full detail kit can be anything up to 100 hours work how much are you going to charge let's face it we all say about it you can be earning seven pound down at tesco's collecting trolleys not there's anything wrong with that to be honest it's my dream job as i've spoken about before okay but at the end of the day if you then put that into 100 hours then you've got the price of your kit, you've got your sundry costs, all your bits and pieces after it and everything else. And I think that's some ways where people forget as a professional, like as I'm sat here, this is my job. I pay insurances, you know, and obviously pay taxes like everybody else and everything else as we do it here as well. So it's not just one of those things where you're sat there making a model and then you sell it. You have got other costs to think about and stuff like that, like accountancy fees, which is a bugbear of my life as well as everything else. It's like everybody takes a little bit of chipping out of you and what you're left at the end of it is nothing. So to answer the question that came up yesterday about my net worth, a lot less than you think. Okay uh kitty hawk i found that a lot of work interesting details that's it absolutely challenging but worth it actually i'll tell you what i will take that sorry it's just jumped i've lost who said that now but i'll take that challenging but worth it that's a good way to describe kitty hawk um definitely uh phil uh if you were to do the hobby boss b24 you must buy the aftermarket turrets and that's what we're saying you can do that now there's a lot of aftermarket stuff for it to make it something very very nice that's the difference uh da, 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 da. right okay right then guys so i'll leave it down there in youtube land i will just check our chat up here and then i'll go back and check the forum sorry it's just me today so i have to run around like johnny on the spot uh phil thank you for your advice on primers questions do you know anywhere uh in the states that i could get an extractor like yours importing from the uk is lots and my wife will kill me thank you jason <sighs> to be honest with you there's some really really nice extractor companies in the us um it's something I wanted to work with one a while ago because they did a beautiful one. It was a big thing and it would have fitted perfectly here. But then when I looked about doing it, getting it in from the US, not only have I got to change the power supply because obviously it's US to UK and everything else like that, um, it was going to cost a fortune. So I feel your pain from that one. Um, I do know for a fact these people, I'm pretty sure I've got a U, I don't know if somebody can help me out with this one. Um, anybody in Flory chat know where you can buy the uh, bench vents in the US? pretty sure they've got an outlet now in the US only because one of our members bought one from there um, so yes you probably want to have a um, I don't know if somebody in Flory chat if you can remember who the US one is uh, perhaps we'll be able to help Jason out on there if not Jason I'll do a little bit of homework after the show I'll try and find it for you but obviously they they import to there then send out but I've got a feeling they just ship directly out to you anyway so we will see um, see how that one but again it it's one of those at the end of the day it just sucks and spits do mm -hmm. but you know it's a good quality one it is fantastic that one at the back there now is 10 years old and it's still running as good as this one now which is what three years old 
um, and they run identically. If you're both running together, they sound identical. The bearings are still fantastic, and those things are running hours every single day. Um, so I have to say, you pay in once, you're fine, and it's fine. Aren't bent spent on Amazon? I don't know. Might be have a, a look, but I'm sure one of the members posted up that you got one from the US. All right, okay, hold on. Strike Force Hobbies. There you go. Strikeforcehobbies.com in Canada. Um, they're importing them in. And they are doing for, where's our one? There it is. $349. And that's with the 60 hertz, 110 volt power thing on it as well. Already done. But if you speak to Benchvent, they will ship. Uh, and obviously as Flory Models member, you do get a discount, don't forget. So um, you can get your bit of money off, which might cover your shipping costs or put a good chunk of it to it. Uh, and you can do it through there. Right, are we done then, guys? If you are, I am as well. Uh, look on, uh, hold on, guys talk about other things. Uh, what is the filter on malls? This is new, da, da, da. hold on. It's all right, the guys are just talking in there, which is fair enough. Absolutely. Right. Okay, then, guys, we will call it there for today. Thank you very much for joining me. So me and Matt will be over with you tomorrow afternoon with the PM Models show, uh, which is obviously the site that uh, I co-own with Matt uh, as well. So you get things on PM Models um, UK uh, and doing things like that. So we'll be back on with you at three. I'm going to carry on with this and hopefully get a little bit of inroad to getting some of the parts together, if not cleaning up a little bit, which would be nice uh, and things like that. Um, and then tomorrow you'll get the next part of the B17 will be up with you as well. A little bit of an extra one up through this week as well uh, so that'll be up with you and then i will get on uh maybe this afternoon or this evening with this challenger review as well so we've got that brand new rifle models one with the aftermarket stuff to do the review as well anyway thank you very much for joining this afternoon it's been an absolute pleasure as always take care stay safe and i'll see you soon bye